Futures Studies, Wikipedia Audio Futures Studies is the study of postulating possible, probable, and preferable futures and the worldviews and myths that underlie them. In general, it can be considered as a branch of the social sciences and parallel to the field of history. Futures Studies seeks to understand what is likely to continue and what could plausibly change. Part of the discipline thus seeks a systematic and pattern-based understanding of past and present, and to determine the likelihood of future events and trends. Unlike the physical sciences where a narrower, more specified system is studied, Futures Studies concerns a much bigger and more complex world system. The methodology and knowledge are much less proven as compared to natural science or even social science like sociology and economics. There is a debate as to whether this discipline is an art or science and sometimes described by scientists as pseudoscience. Futures studies is an interdisciplinary field, studying yesterday's and today's changes, and aggregating and analyzing both lay and professional strategies and opinions with respect to tomorrow. It includes analyzing the sources, patterns, and causes of change and stability in an attempt to develop foresight and to map possible futures. Around the world the field is variously referred to as futures studies, strategic foresight, futuristics, futures thinking, futuring, and futurology. Futures studies and strategic foresight are the academic field's most commonly used terms in the English-speaking world. Overview Foresight was the original term and was first used in this sense by H.G. Wells in 1932. Futurology is a term common in encyclopedias, though it is used almost exclusively by non-practitioners today, at least in the English-speaking world. Futurology is defined as the study of the future. The term was coined by German professor Ossip K. Flechthium in the mid-1940s, who proposed it as a new branch of knowledge that would include a new science of probability. This term may have fallen from favor in recent decades because modern practitioners stress the importance of alternative and plural futures, rather than one monolithic future, and the limitations of prediction and probability, versus the creation of possible and preferable futures. Three factors usually distinguish futures studies from the research conducted by other disciplines. First. Futures studies often examines not only possible but also probable, preferable, and wildcard futures. Second, futures studies typically attempts to gain a holistic or systemic view based on insights from a range of different disciplines, generally focusing on the steep categories of social, technological, economic, environmental, and political. Third, Futures studies challenges and unpacks the assumptions behind dominant and contending views of the future. The future thus is not empty but fraught with hidden assumptions. For example, many people expect the collapse of the Earth's ecosystem in the near future, while others believe the current ecosystem will survive indefinitely. A foresight approach would seek to analyze and highlight the assumptions underpinning such views. Framework foresight, causal layered analysis, environmental scanning, scenario method, education and learning, Delphi method, future history, monitoring, backcasting, cross-impact analysis, futures workshops failure mode and effects analysis, futures wheel, technology road mapping, social network analysis, systems engineering, trend analysis, morphological analysis, technology forecasting, theory U. As a field, futures studies expands on the research component, 
by emphasizing the communication of a strategy and the actionable steps needed to implement the plan or plans leading to the preferable future. It is in this regard, that Futures Studies evolves from an academic exercise to a more traditional business-like practice, looking to better prepare organizations for the future. Futures Studies does not generally focus on short-term predictions such as interest rates over the next business cycle, or of managers or investors with short-term time horizons. Most strategic planning, which develops operational plans for preferred futures with time horizons of one to three years, is also not considered futures. Plans and strategies with longer time horizons that specifically attempt to anticipate possible future events are definitely part of the field. As a rule, futures studies is generally concerned with changes of transformative impact, rather than those of an incremental or narrow scope. The futures field also excludes those who make future predictions through professed supernatural means. Johann Galtung and Sohail Inayatalat argue in Macro History and Macro Historians that the search for grand patterns of social change goes all the way back to Su Ma Qian and his theory of the cycles of virtue, although the work of IBN Kaldun such as the Mukadima would be an example that is perhaps more intelligible to modern sociology. Early Western examples include Sir Thomas More's Utopia published in 1516, and based upon Plato's Republic, in which a future society has overcome poverty and misery to create a perfect model for living. This work was so powerful that utopias have come to represent positive and fulfilling futures in which everyone's needs are met. Some intellectual foundations of futures studies appeared in the mid-19th century. Isidore Comte, considered the father of scientific philosophy, was heavily influenced by the work of utopian socialist Henri Saint-Simon, and his discussion of the metapatterns of social change presages future studies as a scholarly dialogue. Finland's Finsight 2015 Implementation began in 2006 and though at the time was not referred to as foresight they tend to display the characteristics of a foresight program, Singapore's Ministry of Education Master Plan for Information Technology in Education, this third master plan continues what was built on in the first and second plans to transform learning environments to equip students to compete in a knowledge economy, the World Future Society, founded in 1966, is the largest and longest running community of futurists in the world. WFS established and built futurism from the ground up through publications, global summits and advisory roles to world leaders in business and government. The first works that attempt to make systematic predictions for the future were written in the 18th century. Memoirs of the 20th Century written by Samuel Madden in 1733, takes the form of a series of diplomatic letters written in 1997 and 1998 from British representatives in the foreign cities of Constantinople, Rome, Paris, and Moscow. However, the technology of the 20th century is identical to that of Madden's own era. The focus is instead on the political and religious state of the world in the future. Madden went on to write The Reign of George VI, 1900-1925, where he envisioned a large network of waterways that would radically transform patterns of living, villages grew into towns and towns became cities. In 1845, Scientific American the oldest continuously published magazine in the U.S., began publishing articles about scientific and technological research, with a focus upon the future implications of such research. It would be followed in 1872 by the magazine Popular Science, which was aimed at a more general readership. 
history. The genre of science fiction became established towards the end of the 19th century, with notable writers, including Jules Verne and H. G. Wells, setting their stories in an imagined future world. According to W. Warren Wagger, the founder of Future Studies was H. G. Wells. His anticipations of the reaction of mechanical and scientific progress upon human life and thought, an experiment in prophecy, was first serially published in the Fortnightly Review in 1901. Anticipating what the world would be like in the year 2000, the book is interesting both for its hits and its misses. Moving from narrow technological predictions, Wells envisioned the eventual collapse of the capitalist world system after a series of destructive total wars. From this havoc would ultimately emerge a world of peace and plenty, controlled by competent technocrats. The work was a bestseller, and Wells was invited to deliver a lecture at the Royal Institution in 1902, entitled The Discovery of the Future. The lecture was well received and was soon republished in book form. He advocated for the establishment of a new academic study of the future that would be grounded in scientific methodology rather than just speculation. He argued that a scientifically ordered vision of the future will be just as certain, just as strictly science, and perhaps just as detailed as the picture that has been built up within the last hundred years to make the geological past. Although conscious of the difficulty in arriving at entirely accurate predictions, he thought that it would still be possible to arrive at a working knowledge of things in the future. In his fictional works, Wells predicted the invention and use of the atomic bomb in the world set free. In the shape of things to come the impending world war and cities destroyed by aerial bombardment was depicted. However, he didn't stop advocating for the establishment of a future science. In a 1933 BBC broadcast he called for the establishment of departments and professors of foresight, foreshadowing the development of modern academic futures studies by approximately 40 years. At the beginning of the 20th century future works were often shaped by political forces and turmoil. The WWI era led to adoption of futures thinking in institutions throughout Europe. The Russian Revolution led to the 1921 establishment of the Soviet Union's Goss Plan, or State Planning Committee, which was active until the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Goss Plan was responsible for economic planning and created plans in five-year increments to govern the economy. One of the first Soviet dissidents, Yevgeny Zamyadin, published the first dystopian novel, We, in 1921. The science fiction and political satire featured a future police state and was the first work censored by the Soviet censorship board leading to Zamyadin's political exile. In the United States, President Hoover created the Research Committee on Social Trends, which produced a report in 1933. The head of the committee, William F. Ogburn, analyzed the past to chart trends and project those trends into the future, with a focus on technology. Similar technique was used during the Great Depression, with the addition of alternative futures and a set of likely outcomes that resulted in the creation of Social Security and the Tennessee Valley Development Project. Origins Early 20th Century The World War II era emphasized the growing need for foresight. The Nazis used strategic plans to unify and mobilize their society with a focus on creating a fascist utopia. This planning and the subsequent war forced global leaders to create their own strategic plans in response. The post-war era saw the creation of numerous nation-states with complex political alliances and was further complicated by the introduction of nuclear power. 
Mid-Century Emergence Further Development Probability and Predictability Methodologies Futures Techniques Project RAND was created in 1946 as joint project between the United States Army Air Forces and the Douglas Aircraft Company, and later incorporated as the non-profit RAND Corporation. Their objective was the future of weapons, and long-range planning to meet future threats. Their work has formed the basis of U.S. strategy and policy in regard to nuclear weapons, the Cold War, and the space race. Futures studies truly emerged as an academic discipline in the mid-1960s. First-generation futurists included Herman Kahn, an American Cold War strategist for the Rand Corporation who wrote on thermonuclear war thinking about the unthinkable and the year 2000, a framework for speculation on the next 33 years, Bertrand de Juvenal, a French economist who founded Futurables International in 1960, and Denis Gaber, a Hungarian-British scientist who wrote Inventing the Future and the Mature Society. A View of the Future Future studies had a parallel origin with the birth of systems science in academia, and with the idea of national economic and political planning, most notably in France and the Soviet Union. In the 1950s, the people of France were continuing to reconstruct their war-torn country. In the process, French scholars, philosophers, writers, and artists searched for what could constitute a more positive future for humanity. The Soviet Union similarly participated in post-war rebuilding, but did so in the context of an established national economic planning process, which also required a long-term, systemic statement of social goals. Future Studies was therefore primarily engaged in national planning, and the construction of national symbols. Shaping Alternative Futures By contrast, in the United States, Futures Studies as a discipline emerged from the successful application of the tools and perspectives of systems analysis, especially with regard to quartermastering the war effort. The Society for General Systems Research, founded in 1955, sought to understand cybernetics and the practical application of systems sciences, greatly influencing the U.S. foresight community. These differing origins account for an initial schism between futures studies in America and futures studies in Europe. U.S. practitioners focused on applied projects, quantitative tools, and systems analysis, whereas Europeans preferred to investigate the long-range future of humanity and the Earth, what might constitute that future, what symbols and semantics might express it, and who might articulate these. By the 1960s, academics, philosophers, writers, and artists across the globe had begun to explore enough future scenarios so as to fashion a common dialogue. Several of the most notable writers to emerge during this era include, sociologist Fred L. Pollock, whose work Images of the Future discusses the importance of images to society's creation of the future, Marshall McLuhan, whose The Gutenberg Galaxy and Understanding Media, The Extensions of Man put forth his theories on how technologies change our cognitive understanding, and Rachel Carson S. The Silent Spring which was hugely influential not only to future studies but also the creation of the environmental movement. Inventors such as Buckminster Fuller also began highlighting the effect technology might have on global trends as time progressed. By the 1970s there was an obvious shift in the use and development of futures studies, its focus was no longer exclusive to governments and militaries. Instead, it embraced a wide array of technologies, social issues, and concerns. 
This discussion on the intersection of population growth, resource availability and use, economic growth, quality of life, and environmental sustainability referred to as the global problematique came to wide public attention with the publication of Limits to Growth, a study sponsored by the Club of Rome which detailed the results of a computer simulation of the future based on economic and population growth. Public investment in the future was further enhanced by the publication of Alvin Toffler's bestseller Future Shock, and its exploration of how great amounts of change can overwhelm people and create a social paralysis due to information overload. International dialogue became institutionalized in the form of the World Futures Studies Federation, founded in 1967, with the noted sociologist, Johann Galtung, serving as its first president. In the United States, the publisher Edward Cornish, concerned with these issues, started the World Future Society, an organization focused more on interested lay people. The first doctoral program on the study of the future, was founded in 1969 at the University of Massachusetts by Christopher Deed and Billy Rojas. The next graduate program was also founded by Christopher Deed in 1975 at the University of Houston Clear Lake. Oliver Markley of SRI was hired in 1978 to move the program into a more applied and professional direction. The program moved to the University of Houston in 2007 and renamed the degree to Foresight. The program has remained focused on preparing professional futurists and providing high-quality foresight training for individuals and organizations in business, government, education, and non-profits. In 1976, the M.A. Program in Public Policy in Alternative Futures at the University of Hawaii at Manoa was established. The Hawaii program locates future studies within a pedagogical space defined by neo-Marxism, critical political economic theory, and literary criticism. In the years following the foundation of these two programs, single courses in future studies at all levels of education have proliferated but complete programs occur only rarely. In 2012, the Finland Futures Research Center started a master's degree program in futures studies at Turku School of Economics, a business school which is part of the University of Turku in Turku, Finland. As a transdisciplinary field, futures studies attracts generalists. This transdisciplinary nature can also cause problems, owing to it sometimes falling between the cracks of disciplinary boundaries, it also has caused some difficulty in achieving recognition within the traditional curricula of the sciences and the humanities. In contrast to futures studies at the undergraduate level, some graduate programs in strategic leadership or management offer master's or doctorate programs in strategic foresight for mid-career professionals, some even online. Nevertheless, comparatively few new PhDs graduate in futures studies each year. Weak Signals, The Future Sign and Wild Cards the field currently faces the great challenge of creating a coherent conceptual framework, codified into a well-documented curriculum featuring widely accepted and consistent concepts and theoretical paradigms linked to quantitative and qualitative methods, exemplars of those research methods, and guidelines for their ethical and appropriate application within society. As an indication that previously disparate intellectual dialogues have in fact started converging into a recognizable discipline, at least six solidly researched and well-accepted first attempts to synthesize a coherent framework for the field have appeared, Eleonora Massini's Y Futures Studies, James Dater's Advancing Futures Studies, Ziaudin Sardar's Rescuing All of Our Futures, Sohail Inayatala's Questioning the Future, 
Richard A. Slaughter S. The Knowledge Base of Future Studies A Collection of Essays by Senior Practitioners, and Wendell Bell S. Two-Volume Work, The Foundations of Future Studies Some aspects of the future, such as celestial mechanics, are highly predictable, and may even be described by relatively simple mathematical models. At present however, science has yielded only a special minority of such easy-to-predict physical processes. Theories such as chaos theory, nonlinear science, and standard evolutionary theory have allowed us to understand many complex systems as contingent and stochastic, making the vast majority of future events unpredictable, in any specific case. Near-term predictions not surprisingly, the tension between predictability and unpredictability is a source of controversy and conflict among future studies scholars and practitioners. Some argue that the future is essentially unpredictable, and that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Others believe, as Fleck Theum, that advances in science, probability, Modeling and statistics will allow us to continue to improve our understanding of probable futures, while this area presently remains less well developed than methods for exploring possible and preferable futures. As an example, consider the process of electing the President of the United States. At one level we observe that any U.S. citizen over 35 may run for President, so this process may appear too unconstrained for useful prediction. Yet further investigation demonstrates that only certain public individuals receive the appropriate social credentials that are historical prerequisites for election. Thus with a minimum of effort at formulating the problem for statistical prediction, a much reduced pool of candidates can be described, improving our probabilistic foresight. Applying further statistical intelligence to this problem, we can observe that in certain election prediction markets such as the Iowa electronic markets, reliable forecasts have been generated over long spans of time and conditions, with results superior to individual experts or polls. Such markets, which may be operated publicly or as an internal market, are just one of several promising frontiers in predictive futures research. Trend Analysis and Forecasting Megatrends Potential Trends Such improvements in the predictability of individual events do not though, from a complexity theory viewpoint, address the unpredictability inherent in dealing with entire systems which emerge from the interaction between multiple individual events. Futurology is sometimes described by scientists as pseudoscience. In terms of methodology, futures practitioners employ a wide range of approaches, models, and methods, in both theory and practice, many of which are derived from or informed by other academic or professional disciplines including social sciences such as economics, psychology, sociology, religious studies, cultural studies, history, geography, and political science, physical and life sciences such as physics, chemistry, astronomy, biology, mathematics, including statistics, game theory and econometrics applied disciplines such as engineering, computer sciences, and business management. Given its unique objectives and material, the practice of future studies only rarely features employment of the scientific method in the sense of controlled, repeatable and verifiable experiments with highly standardized methodologies. However, Many futurists are informed by scientific techniques or work primarily within scientific domains. Borrowing from history, the futurist might project patterns observed in past civilizations upon present-day society to model what might happen in the future, 
or borrowing from technology, the futurist may model possible social and cultural responses to an emerging technology based on established principles of the diffusion of innovation. In short, the futures practitioner enjoys the synergies of an interdisciplinary laboratory. As the plural term futures suggests, one of the fundamental assumptions in futures studies is that the future is plural not singular. That is, the future consists not of one inevitable future that is to be predicted, but rather of multiple alternative futures of varying likelihood which may be derived and described, and about which it is impossible to say with certainty which one will occur. The primary effort in future studies, then, is to identify and describe alternative futures in order to better understand the driving forces of the present or the structural dynamics of a particular subject or subjects. The exercise of identifying alternative futures includes collecting quantitative and qualitative data about the possibility, probability, and desirability of change. The plural term futures in futures studies denotes both the rich variety of alternative futures, including the subset of preferable futures, that can be studied, as well as the tenet that the future is many. At present, the general futures studies model has been summarized as being concerned with 3PS and AW, or possible, probable, and preferable futures plus wild cards, which are low probability but high impact events. Many futurists, however, do not use the wild card approach. Rather, they use a methodology called emerging issues analysis. It searches for the drivers of change, issues that are likely to move from unknown to the known, from low impact to high impact. In terms of technique, Futures practitioners originally concentrated on extrapolating present technological, economic, or social trends, or on attempting to predict future trends. Over time, the discipline has come to put more and more focus on the examination of social systems and uncertainties, to the end of articulating scenarios. The practice of scenario development facilitates the examination of worldviews and assumptions through the causal layered analysis method, the creation of preferred visions of the future, and the use of exercises such as backcasting to connect the present with alternative futures. Apart from extrapolation and scenarios, many dozens of methods and techniques are used in futures research. The general practice of futures studies also sometimes includes the articulation of normative or preferred futures, and a major thread of practice involves connecting both extrapolated and normative research to assist individuals and organizations to model preferred futures amid shifting social changes. Practitioners use varying proportions of collaboration, creativity, and research to derive and define alternative futures and to the degree that a preferred future might be sought, especially in an organizational context, techniques may also be deployed to develop plans or strategies for directed future shaping or implementation of a preferred future. While some futurists are not concerned with assigning probability to future scenarios, other futurists find probabilities useful in certain situations, such as when probabilities stimulate thinking about scenarios within organizations. When dealing with the 3PS and AW model, estimates of probability are involved with two of the four central concerns, while considering the range of possible futures, recognizing the plurality of existing alternative futures, characterizing and attempting to resolve normative disagreements on the future and envisioning and creating preferred futures are other major areas of scholarship. Most estimates of probability in futures studies are normative and qualitative, though significant progress on statistical and quantitative methods etc. has been made in recent decades. 
futures techniques or methodologies may be viewed as frameworks for making sense of data generated by structured processes to think about the future. There is no single set of methods that are appropriate for all futures research. Different futures researchers intentionally or unintentionally promote use of favored techniques over a more structured approach. Selection of methods for use on futures research projects has so far been dominated by the intuition and insight of practitioners, but can better identify a balanced selection of techniques via acknowledgement of foresight as a process together with familiarity with the fundamental attributes of most commonly used methods. Futurists use a diverse range of forecasting methods including Futurists use scenarios alternative possible futures as an important tool. To some extent, people can determine what they consider probable or desirable using qualitative and quantitative methods. By looking at a variety of possibilities one comes closer to shaping the future, rather than merely predicting it. Shaping alternative futures starts by establishing a number of scenarios. Setting up scenarios takes place as a process with many stages. One of those stages involves the study of trends. A trend persists long-term and long-range, it affects many societal groups, grows slowly and appears to have a profound basis. In contrast, a fad operates in the short term, shows the vagaries of fashion, affects particular societal groups, and spreads quickly but superficially. Sample predicted futures range from predicted ecological catastrophes, through a utopian future where the poorest human being lives in what present-day observers would regard as wealth and comfort, through the transformation of humanity into a post-human life form, to the destruction of all life on Earth in, say, a nanotechnological disaster. Futurists have a decidedly mixed reputation and Apache track record at successful prediction. For reasons of convenience, they often extrapolate present technical and societal trends and assume they will develop at the same rate into the future, but technical progress and social upheavals, in reality, take place in fits and starts and in different areas at different rates. Many 1950s futurists predicted commonplace space tourism by the year 2000, but ignored the possibilities of ubiquitous, cheap computers. On the other hand, many forecasts have portrayed the future with some degree of accuracy. Current futurists often present multiple scenarios that help their audience envision what may occur instead of merely predicting the future. They claim that understanding potential scenarios helps individuals and organizations prepare with flexibility. Many corporations use futurists as part of their risk management strategy, for horizon scanning and emerging issues analysis, and to identify wildcards low probability, potentially high impact risks. Every successful and unsuccessful business engages in futuring to some degree for example in research and development, innovation and market research, anticipating competitor behavior and so on. In futures research weak signals may be understood as advanced, noisy and socially situated indicators of change in trends and systems that constitute raw informational material for enabling anticipatory action. There is some confusion about the definition of weak signal by various researchers and consultants. Sometimes it is referred as future-oriented information, sometimes more like emerging issues. The confusion has been partly clarified with the concept the future sign, by separating signal, issue and interpretation of the future sign. A weak signal can be an early indicator of coming change, and an example might also help clarify the confusion. On May 27, 2012, 
Hundreds of people gathered for a Take the Flower Back demonstration at Roth Amstead Research in Harpenden, UK, to oppose a publicly funded trial of genetically modified wheat. This was a weak signal for a broader shift in consumer sentiment against genetically modified foods. When Whole Foods mandated the labeling of GMOs in 2013, this non-GMO idea had already become a trend and was about to be a topic of mainstream awareness. Wild cards refer to low probability and high impact events, such as existential risks. This concept may be embedded in standard foresight projects and introduced into anticipatory decision-making activity in order to increase the ability of social groups adapt to surprises arising in turbulent business environments. Such sudden and unique incidents might constitute turning points in the evolution of a certain trend or system. Wild cards may or may not be announced by weak signals which are incomplete and fragmented data from which relevant foresight information might be inferred. Sometimes, mistakenly, wild cards and weak signals are considered as synonyms, which they are not. One of the most often cited examples of a wild card event in recent history is 9-11. Nothing had happened in the past that could point to such a possibility and yet it had a huge impact on everyday life in the United States, from simple tasks like how to travel via airplane to deeper cultural values. Wild card events might also be natural disasters, such as Hurricane Katrina which can force the relocation of huge populations and wipe out entire crops to completely disrupt the supply chain of many businesses. Although wild card events can't be predicted, after they occur it is often easy to reflect back and convincingly explain why they happened. A long-running tradition in various cultures, and especially in the media, involves various spokespersons making predictions for the upcoming year at the beginning of the year. These predictions sometimes base themselves on current trends in culture, sometimes they make hopeful guesses as to what major events might take place over the course of the next year. Some of these predictions come true as the year unfolds, though many fail. When predicted events fail to take place, the authors of the predictions often state that misinterpretation of the signs and portents may explain the failure of the prediction. Marketers have increasingly started to embrace future studies, in an effort to benefit from an increasingly competitive marketplace with fast production cycles, using such techniques as trend spotting as popularized by Faith Popcorn. Trends come in different sizes. A megatrend extends over many generations, and in cases of climate, megatrends can cover periods prior to human existence. They describe complex interactions between many factors. The increase in population from the Paleolithic period to the present provides an example. Possible new trends grow from innovations, projects, beliefs, or actions that have the potential to grow and eventually go mainstream in the future. Very often, trends relate to one another the same way as a tree trunk relates to branches and twigs. For example, a well-documented movement toward equality between men and women might represent a branch trend. The trend toward reducing differences in the salaries of men and women in the Western world could form a twig on that branch. When a potential trend gets enough confirmation in the various media, surveys, or questionnaires to show that it has an increasingly accepted value, behavior or technology, it becomes accepted as a bona fide trend. Trends can also gain confirmation by the existence of other trends perceived as springing from the same branch. Some commentators claim that when 15% to 25% of a given population integrates an innovation, project, belief, or action into their daily life then a trend becomes mainstream.
because new advances in technology have the potential to reshape our society, one of the jobs of a futurist is to follow these developments and consider their implications. However, the latest innovations take time to make an impact. Every new technology goes through its own life cycle of maturity, adoption, and social application that must be taken into consideration before a probable vision of the future can be created. Gartner created their hype cycle to illustrate the phases a technology moves through as it grows from research and development to mainstream adoption. The unrealistic expectations and subsequent disillusionment that virtual reality experienced in the 1990s and early 2000s is an example of the middle phases encountered before a technology can begin to be integrated into society. Education in the field of futures studies has taken place for some time. Beginning in the United States of America in the 1960s, it has since developed in many different countries. Futures education encourages the use of concepts, tools, and processes that allow students to think long-term, consequentially, and imaginatively. It generally helps students to Thorough documentation of the history of futures education exists, for example in the work of Richard A. Slaughter, David Hicks, Ivana Milojevic to name a few. While futures studies remains a relatively new academic tradition, numerous tertiary institutions around the world teach it. These vary from small programs, or universities with just one or two classes, to programs that offer certificates and incorporate futures studies into other degrees. Various formal master's level programs exist on six continents. Finally, doctoral dissertations around the world have incorporated futures studies. A recent survey documented approximately 50 cases of futures studies at the tertiary level. The largest futures studies program in the world is at Tamkeng University, Taiwan. Futures Studies is a required course at the undergraduate level, with between 3 and 5,000 students taking classes on an annual basis. Housed in the Graduate Institute of Futures Studies is an MA program. Only 10 students are accepted annually in the program. Associated with the program is the Journal of Futures Studies. The longest-running future studies program in North America was established in 1975 at the University of Houston Clear Lake. It moved to the University of Houston in 2007 and renamed the degree to Foresight. The program was established on the belief that if history is studied and taught in an academic setting, then so should the future. Its mission is to prepare professional futurists. The curriculum incorporates a blend of the essential theory, a framework, and methods for doing the work, and a focus on application for clients in business, government, non-profits, and society in general. As of 2003, over 40 tertiary education establishments around the world were delivering one or more courses in future studies. The World Futures Studies Federation has a comprehensive survey of global futures programs and courses. The Acceleration Studies Foundation maintains an annotated list of primary and secondary graduate futures studies programs. Organizations such as Teach the Future also aim to promote future studies in the secondary school curriculum in order to develop structured approaches to thinking about the future in public school students. The rationale is that a sophisticated approach to thinking about, anticipating, and planning for the future is a core skill requirement that every student should have, similar to literacy and math skills. Several corporations and government agencies utilize foresight products to both better understand potential risks and prepare for potential opportunities. 
several government agencies publish material for internal stakeholders as well as make that material available to broader public. Examples of this include the U.S. Congressional Budget Office Long-Term Budget Projections, the National Intelligence Center, and the United Kingdom Government Office for Science. Much of this material is used by policy makers to inform policy decisions and government agencies to develop long-term plan. Several corporations, particularly those with long product development life cycles, utilize foresight and future studies products and practitioners in the development of their business strategies. The Shell Corporation is one such entity. Foresight professionals and their tools are increasingly being utilized in both the private and public areas to help leaders deal with an increasingly complex and interconnected world. Foresight and futures thinking are rapidly being adopted by the design industry to ensure more sustainable, robust, and humanistic products. Design much like future studies is an interdisciplinary field that considers global trends, challenges and opportunities to foster innovation. Designers are thus adopting futures methodologies including scenarios, trend forecasting, and futures research. Holistic thinking that incorporates strategic, innovative, and anticipatory solutions gives designers the tools necessary to navigate complex problems and develop novel future-enhancing and visionary solutions. Branching Trends The Association for Professional Futurists has also held meetings discussing the ways in which design thinking and futures thinking intersect and benefit one another. Imperial cycles represent an expanding pulsation of mathematically describable macrohistoric trend. The list of largest empires contains imperial record progression in terms of territory or percentage of world population under single imperial rule. Chinese philosopher Kang Yuwei and French demographer Georges Vacher de la Poge in the late 19th century were the first to stress that the trend cannot proceed indefinitely on the definite surface of the globe. The trend is bound to culminate in a world empire. Kang Yuwei estimated that the matter will be decided in the contest between Washington and Berlin. Vacher de la Poge foresaw this contest between the United States and Russia and estimated the chance of the United States higher. Both published their futures studies before H. G. Wells introduced the science of future in his anticipations. Four later anthropologists Hornell Hart, Raoul Nerol, Louis Morano, and Robert Carnero researched the expanding imperial cycles. They reached the same conclusion that a world empire is not only predetermined but close at hand and attempted to estimate the time of its appearance. As foresight has expanded to include a broader range of social concerns all levels and types of education have been addressed, including formal and informal education. Many countries are beginning to implement foresight in their education policy. A few programs are listed below. Life Cycle of a Trend By the early 2000s, educators began to independently institute futures studies lessons in K-12 classroom environments. To meet the need, non-profit futures organizations designed curriculum plans to supply educators with materials on the topic. Many of the curriculum plans were developed to meet common core standards. Future studies education methods for youth typically include age-appropriate collaborative activities, games, systems thinking and scenario building exercises. Wendell Bell and Ed Cornish acknowledge science fiction as a catalyst to future studies, conjuring up visions of tomorrow. Science fiction's potential to provide an imaginative social vision is its contribution to future studies and public perspective. Productive sci-fi presents plausible, normative scenarios. 
Jim Dater attributes the foundational concepts of images of the future to Wendell Bell, for clarifying Fred Pollock's concept in images of the future, as it applies to future studies. Similar to future studies scenarios thinking, empirically supported visions of the future are a window into what the future could be. Pamela Sargent states, Science fiction reflects attitudes typical of this century. She gives a brief history of impactful sci-fi publications, like the Foundation Trilogy, by Isaac Asimov and Starship Troopers, by Robert A. Heinlein. Alternate perspectives validate sci-fi as part of the fuzzy images of the future. However, the challenge is the lack of consistent futures research-based literature frameworks. Ian Miles reviews the new Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, identifying ways science fiction and future studies cross-fertilize, as well as the ways in which they differ distinctly. Science fiction cannot be simply considered fictionalized future studies. It may have aims other than prediction, and be no more concerned with shaping the future than any other genre of literature. It is not to be understood as an explicit pillar of future studies, due to its inconsistency of integrated futures research. Additionally, Dennis Livingston, a literature and futures journal critic says, the depiction of truly alternative societies has not been one of science fiction's strong points, especially preferred, normative envisages. Life Cycle of Technologies Several governments have formalized strategic foresight agencies to encourage long-range strategic societal planning, with most notable are the governments of Singapore, Finland and the United Arab Emirates. Other governments with strategic foresight agencies include Canada's Policy Horizons Canada and the Malaysia's Malaysian Foresight Institute. The Singapore Government's Centre for Strategic Futures is part of the strategy group within the Prime Minister's office. Their mission is to position the Singapore government to navigate emerging strategic challenges and harness potential opportunities. Singapore's early formal efforts in strategic foresight began in 1991 with the establishment of the Risk Detection and Scenario Planning Office in the Ministry of Defence. In addition to the CSF, the Singapore government has established the Strategic Futures Network which brings together deputy secretary-level officers and foresight units across the government to discuss emerging trends that may have implications for Singapore. Education Applications of Foresight and Specific Fields Since the 1990s, Finland has integrated strategic foresight within the parliament and prime minister's office. The government is required to present a report of the future each parliamentary term for review by the Parliamentary Committee for the Future. Led by the Prime Minister's Office, the Government Foresight Group coordinates the government's foresight efforts. Futures research is supported by the Finnish Society for Futures Studies, the Finland Futures Research Centre and the Finland Futures Academy in coordination with foresight units in various government agencies. In the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, Vice President and Ruler of Dubai, announced in September 2016 that all government ministries were to appoint directors of future planning. Sheikh Mohammed described the UAE strategy for the future as an integrated strategy to forecast our nation's future, aiming to anticipate challenges and seize opportunities. The Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and Future is mandated with crafting the UAE strategy for the future and is responsible for the portfolio of the future of UAE. Foresight is also applied when studying potential risks to society and how to effectively deal with them. These risks may arise from the development and adoption of emerging technologies and slash or social change. 
special interest lies on hypothetical future events that have the potential to damage human well-being on a global scale, global catastrophic risks. Such events may cripple or destroy modern civilization or, in the case of existential risks, even cause human extinction. Potential global catastrophic risks include but are not limited to hostile artificial intelligence, nanotechnology weapons, climate change, nuclear warfare, total war, and pandemics. General Applicability and Use of Foresight Products Fashion and Design Imperial Cycles and World Order Education 2 Science Fiction Government Agencies Risk Analysis and Management Research Centers Futurists Notable Futurists Books APF's List of Most Significant Futures Works Other Notable Foresight Books Periodicals and Journals Organizations Foresight Professional Networks Several authors have become recognized as futurists. They research trends, particularly in technology, and write their observations, conclusions, and predictions. In earlier eras, many futurists were at academic institutions. John McHale author of The Future of the Future, published a Futures Directory, and directed a think tank called the Center for Integrative Studies at a university. Futurists have started consulting groups or earn money as speakers, with examples including Alvin Toffler, John Naisbitt, and Patrick Dixon. Frank Feather is a business speaker that presents himself as a pragmatic futurist. Some futurists have commonalities with science fiction, and some science fiction writers, such as Arthur C. Clarke, are known as futurists. In the introduction to The Left Hand of Darkness, Ursula K. L. Egan distinguished futurists from novelists, writing of the study as the business of prophets, clairvoyants, and futurists. In her words, a novelist's business is lying. A survey of 108 futurists found that they share a variety of assumptions, including in their description of the present as a critical moment in an historical transformation, in their recognition and belief in complexity, and in their being motivated by change and having a desire for an active role bringing change. The Association for Professional Futurists recognizes the most significant futures works for the purpose of identifying and rewarding the work of foresight professionals and others whose work illuminates aspects of the future. Public Sector Foresight Organizations Non-Governmental Foresight Organizations <laughs>